the Leslie at Words Are Live channel would like to welcome Peter McGeehan. Hello, this piece is called Grandma's Mealtime and it's based on memories of our, our long gone youth. It was different then. The austerity of uh, times had gone by, the 30s, 40s, and the immediate aftermath of the war remained embedded in the psyche. Though things were improving, there remained a perception of frugality. Make do and mend, save and budget with care. With attitudes like this prevailing in the mid or late to late 40s, and for many into the 50s era, it was normal as a child to modify expectations. I was in a fairly unique situation whereby I was brought up by my grandparents, so they were my immediate family, not to be visited occasionally. My adoptive family included four brothers and two sisters, embodying a family which might have been classed as lower middle class. The family had been coal merchants until the war had put pay into the business. Some of my earliest memories revolve around family mealtimes. We sat around a large, unfolded Victorian dinner table, shared meals and conversations. Mealtimes lasted a long time and included several courses for the main meal of the day. Then it was tea time during the working week and with only the oldest brother married and all other members of the family working, the family income was good. This did not preclude the need to shop economically. Several members of the family would go together to do the main family shopping on Saturdays. We lived in a port city and the shopping opportunities were very good. I remember going to a popular shopping area a few miles away where there were many open fronted shops, including many greengrocers, butchers and fishmongers in long rows side by side regular shops with, with a bustling market atmosphere. Small three-wheeler vans parked haphazardly down each side of the road, two or three deep, having delivered fresh produce early in the day. The whole area had an unforgettable aroma of fresh fish and vegetables, mainly fish. As we entered each shop, the smells took on the mouth-watering atmosphere of that particular shop. The green grocers, no stinging attack of fresh tomatoes, onions and greens, spices and mustard. The fishmongers greeted you with fresh oceanic spray, gaping mouths and glassy eyes followed you around the display counters. The butchers' freshly cut joints and bacon, hanging fowl and rabbits emitted the tangy smell of blood. Even that tingled the juices in the mouth. The bakeries, oh, the bakeries, competing easily with all those other smells. The bakeries wafted the aromas of fresh bread, cakes and homemade preserves. Then, to break up the theme, we had a few closed-fronted shops such as Chandler's, the post office, the jewellers and the inevitable pawn shops. By early afternoon, the street would be awash with washing down water and disinfecting fluids running down the drains and the little vans would melt away. Hundreds of shoppers loaded down with bags would now queue for buses or trams and one or two lucky children would be licking ice cream from the Fredericks van nearby. The chippy would be packed with long queues and a new smell would fill the street, fish and chips and vinegar. Wonderful. Parcels of clean, recycled newspaper would keep the precious cargo of warm on the way home. We shopped for the large family packs and due to the volume of shopping, then struggled to find seats on the tram home. I remember on one lucky occasion, my married brother, a tram conductor, was on our tram, so we got home free. The foods I remember were tripe, which I hated, pig trotters, not keen, Haddock, cod and kippers, loved kippers, and of course the weekend scouse. Meat, potatoes, gravy, some veg and recycled leftovers from a few days ago. On occasion this was topped by thick suet crust. 
Then we had homemade fruit pies, large plate size. The favourite was apple, but it was never enough for me. Everyone got spam sandwiches for carrying out. That was for dinner at work. I got it too when I started work years later. I don't know any particular recipes, but I do know that the family meals were important and traditional. Everyone looking in with the shopping, everyone paying their way. I suppose Grandma's best recipe was the right mixture of family bonding. What better recipe can there be?